Hello, everyone, and welcome to Island Technologies presentation, where we look at the topic of uh, virtual private networks. My name is Java, and I'm an IT sales officer at Island Technology. Today, I'll give an introduction to VPN solutions offered in Draytech routers. This is the first part in a four-part series of webinars. Here's an outline of the topics we will cover today. The aim of this session is to give you an introduction to VPN, the types of VPN tunnels and VPN protocols. We will also look at some VPN configuration examples. So let us start by looking at VPN basics. A virtual private network, otherwise known as VPN, allows remote computers to securely communicate with each other across the internet. Using VPNs provides a secure and low cost method to extend the office network over the internet. There's no need for a dedicated link between two sites to securely exchange data. Therefore, a VPN becomes an extension of a private network using links spread across shared or public networks such as the internet. This means that you can send data between two computers across public networks in a manner that emulates the properties of a point-to-point -point private link. Now, we've heard the term VPN tunnel several times. This is used to describe the connection between your computer and the VPN server or the connection between VPN servers. It's essentially a communication channel or a tunnel which protects your data being transmitted within it from being accessed by anyone else. A simple analogy is a road tunnel for cars where the concrete tunnel itself protects the cars driving through it from the water or earth above from crashing down. As you're probably aware, a lot of businesses choose to adopt virtual private networks to share their resources with employees and partners that are not based in the office at all times. Organizations have also begun using VPNs to outsource their work, enabling them to lower internal staff costs while maintaining data security. It's important to emphasize that data breaches not only lead to compensation and regulatory fines, but can leave lasting reputational damage. The table shown here lists the number of VPN tunnels supported in each Draytech router model. They start at two for the low-end routers, such as the Vigor 2762, and go up to 500 for the high-end router, that is the Vigor 3900. We'll now look at the types of VPN tunnels. Now, there are two main types of VPN tunnels available in Draytech routers. First is a LAN-to-LAN -LAN VPN tunnel, and second is a remote dial-in VPN. LAN-to-LAN -LAN VPN tunnels are used to connect a branch office or a home office to the head office for sharing resources. Through one VPN tunnel, many users can be connected over the internet. The users at branch office can access servers and printers, for example, as if they were on their local network. In this mode, only one VPN connection is created and all staff at the branch office can access head office services. At the same time, head office staff can access branch office services. One requirement is that the two networks should not have the same LAN network address as shown in the example the router A, that is the headquarters on the left, is configured as the VPN server, and it has LAN IP subnets of 192.168.1.0 and 192.168.3.0, while router B, which is the remote branch office on the right, is configured as the VPN client, and has LAN IP subnet of 192.168.2.0, which is different from the router A network. The remote dial-in VPN tunnel is also known as host to gateway VPN tunnel. Here, a single user uses a VPN client that's running on the computer 
to set up a VPN tunnel for secure communication with the head office network. The VPN client will use an IP address in the local subnet at the remote network. Please note that each remote dial-in VPN tunnel created count towards the total number of VPN tunnels supported in the router. For example, the Vigor 2862 router that supports a maximum of 32 VPN tunnels. These can be 32 remote dial-in connections or a combination of dial-in connections and LAN-to-LAN -LAN VPN connections. The VPN client can be the default VPN client that's built into Windows or the smart VPN client that's supplied by Draytech. Now, SSL VPN is another type of VPN that can be used by remote dial-in users using a standard web browser. There are fewer restrictions for the data encrypted through SSL VPN when compared with traditional VPN. It can also be implemented by using Draytech Smart VPN Client for Windows PCs, uh, Android, and Apple Mac devices. All right, so this is important. This diagram actually shows you how VPN tunneling works. In step one, the data payload is sent from PC to the destination network. In step two, the router appends a tunneling header to the incoming data packet. This encapsulated payload is sent across the internet to the destination router in step three. And finally, the tunneling header is removed by the destination router and data payload is sent to its final destination in step four. Some tunneling protocols not only encapsulate the data, but can also encrypt it to protect the confidentiality and integrity of the information. As shown in this diagram, the routers at each end of the VPN tunnel encrypt and decrypt the data traversing the VPN tunnel. This diagram here shows the different stages in setting up an IPsec VPN tunnel. We have the call initiation, handshaking, Internet key exchange phase one and phase two in steps two and three, then tunnel establishment. Understanding all these different stages will help to troubleshoot IPsec VPN connectivity issues. There are plenty of knowledge base articles and uh, YouTube videos that describe how IPsec works. And we will be covering this in greater detail in part two of this ongoing VPN webinar series. Draytech routers include the most common VPN tunneling protocols with no additional licensing requirements. It's important to note that OpenVPN has been added recently in the latest firmware version 3.9.0 in DreOS routers. Security features for some of these VPN protocols is shown in this table. At the top, we have GRE or Generic Routing Encapsulation, which is the most basic protocol that offers no encryption or peer authentication. We use GRE where IP tunneling without privacy is required. It's basically simpler and thus faster. On the other hand, there is IPsec, which is the primary protocol of the internet. It offers more security because of its authentication and encryption features. As I've mentioned before, we will be discussing IPsec protocol in greater detail in our future webinars. We will now look at VPN configuration. The Draytech DreOS routers provide a VPN configuration wizard, which guides new users through the steps in setting up a VPN tunnel. The VPN client wizard provides step-by-step -step menu options to configure the client side of the LAN-to-LAN -LAN VPN connection. The VPN client will dial out and establish a connection with the VPN server. We start by selecting the VPN mode and profile to use, then select the VPN protocol. And in the last step, we enter the VPN details. 
The good thing here is that one does not need to know how to navigate through the VPN menu and life is simple. The VPN server visit is configured in a similar manner. VPN configuration options are available under the main menu, VPN and remote access. We'll first look at the remote access control setup menu. Remote access control allows you to select which VPN server to run in the router. By default, all VPN services are enabled as indicated by the tick next to the service type. If you have a VPN server behind the router, say a Windows VPN server on your LAN, then you need to deselect that service in this menu. You'll also need to configure the required NAT settings, such as DMZ or open port for this to work. More details are available in application notes on the Draytech website. This submenu only applies to PPP related VPN connections such as PPTP, L2TP or L2TP over IPsec. It includes global settings such as authentication methods for the VPN clients and IP address assignment for dial-in VPN users. The IPsec general setup menu allows you to configure global parameters for remote dial-in users and the dynamic IP client, that is LAN to LAN. In order to use digital certificate for peer authentication in either LAN to LAN connection or remote user dial-in connection, you may edit a table of peer certificate for selection. OpenVPN provides many configurable parameters in the general setup menu, such as TCP or UDP and port number to construct the VPN tunnel. In the client configuration menu, details such as the remote server and CA certificate details can be entered. This menu allows you to create profiles for remote users to be authenticated and connect to the router via dial-up VPN. The number of dial-in user accounts that can be set up will vary by the router model. I believe this screenshot is from the Vigor 2862 router that supports up to 32 remote dial-in accounts. And here we have the configuration page to create profiles for LAN to LAN VPN tunnels. This would be the VPN trunk management menu. Here we can set up VPN load balancing or a backup VPN tunnel. The connection management menu shows the status of all VPN connections. We'll now look at dial-in VPN configuration. I will show you the steps to create a dial-in user profile. So a dial-in VPN is used where a remote worker needs to connect to the office network to access resources in the head office using their PC, laptop, or smart device. On the router side, we need to create VPN profile and select allowed dial-in type then enter the username and password or the pre-shared key depending on the VPN protocol used. And on the client end, we need to install and configure a suitable VPN client. Draytech has VPN clients for Windows PCs, iOS, and for Android devices. Well, step one to configure the router is to ensure that required services are enabled. As I've mentioned earlier, all the services are enabled by default. On to step two of router configuration, we go to the remote dial-in user menu to create a profile for the user. And the final step of router configuration is to enter dial-in user details, which are username and password for PPTP or SSL dial-in connections, or the pre-shared key for IPsec. You'll also need to select which LAN subnet to use for the incoming connection if more than one subnets are available on the router. Windows 10 has a built-in VPN client that caters for a number of VPN protocols. And Draytech provides a smart VPN client for Windows that can be used to set up different types of dial-in VPN connections. 
Draytech also provides a smart VPN client for Apple iOS and Mac OS devices. I would recommend having a go at the knowledge base on the Draytech website. There are a number of application notes available that cover various scenarios. There's also a smart VPN client for Android devices, which is available for download from the Google Play Store. More information about Draytech and application notes related to VPNs are available on our website, www.draytech.com.au. And for product information, you can send an email to sales at draytech.com.au. Thank you and bye for now.